Welcome to the Monday Solo Round on the Unstoppable Podcast. This is episode 75. My name is Dan J. Gregory, and I am committed to hunting down the secrets of business mastery and human performance. My goal for the Unstoppable Podcast is to share insights from some of the most successful entrepreneurs, inspiring thought leaders, world-class athletes, and prominent celebrities to help you to become unstoppable in business and life. Each week, I'll be bringing you a new interview with an inspiring person and sharing my own results as I pursue the answers to the question, how can I create the ultimate edge in my business, make a significant impact, and live an extraordinary life? Hello, and a very warm welcome to episode 75 of the Unstoppable Podcast, now three quarters of the way to the 100 episode mark. Unbelievable making tracks. So today's episode is all about hitting the reset button and starting over. Now this conversation is predominantly going to be about business, but you can apply what I'm going to be talking about today in any area of your life. So if you're looking to create a transformation in your business or an area of your life, then stay tuned. It's going to be a great impactful episode. And I'm going to warn you, this is one of my fully unscripted episodes. I've got a lot of energy and emotion in this area about creating transformation. Therefore, it could be a very intense one. So strap in and hold on. But before I fire into it, as always, let me recap what's been happening on the show over the past seven days. On Thursday last week, I launched part one of my brand new five-part money mindset mini-series, and I introduced a very special guest to kick off the program. Part one was entitled The Art of Money and featured financial coach, mentor, and therapist Barry Tesla. Barry is the author of The Art of Money, A Life-Changing Guide to Financial Happiness, and she has helped great volumes of people to improve their financial health. Her work has been featured on the likes of Oprah.com and the Huffington Post, among tons of other major publications, and she really brought the goods in episode 74, so be sure to check it out. This is part one of five, and the next part of the series is coming up on Thursday with another very special guest, which I'll be revealing at the end of this show, so stay tuned. Last Monday, I shared how to break your bad habits. Over the past couple of weeks, I've taken a deep dive into how habits are both formed and eliminated. And I've been researching the latest insights on the world of psychology and neuroscience to support these episodes. So last week, I shared a simple formula for breaking bad habits. So if you know that you've got a habit that you want to eliminate, then go back and tune into episode 73 after this show. All right, so let's jump into today's session, starting over. Let me give you some context in terms of what this episode is all about. This very week marks four years since I left my corporate job behind. I spent around seven and a half years in corporate working for a major bank. Um, For those of you who've been following my journey on the podcast and know a little bit about my story, you know, the first part of my career I really enjoyed. You know, when I came out of university, it was the opportunity to earn money, the opportunity to grow, the opportunity to learn and develop and you know, really my first real exposure to the big wide world. So it was quite interesting. But then, then as as I progressed, I began to slowly lose my passion. And I have a phrase that says, your performance is always capped by your passion. And my passion started to dwindle. And whilst I still enjoyed myself to some extent, I I began to, to, to start to look for other opportunities, other career paths, and eventually left my corporate career in 2012. It was a big decision, but one I don't regret. So Looking back now, I've been reflecting deeply on the journey that I've been on since my corporate career and where I'm going next. And to be completely honest and completely frank, this episode is going to be very much about sharing some of the deep struggles that I went through because over this past four year period, I have had some major struggles and challenges. And it's it's really taken me until this year, 2016, to build my brand and begin working with the types of clients that I want to work with in terms of that high end piece. And along the way, I've had to take jobs and borrow from friends and family and loved ones just to keep afloat, but I've kept in the game and I've kept the faith in myself and on my mission. So in this episode, I want to reflect on some of the key lessons I've learned from some of my failings to help you avoid some of the same mistakes that I have. And I want to share a template in terms of starting over how I would start my business today if I was starting all over. And there's a reason for that because over the the past four years, I've accumulated um, and, and previous to that, in fact, through my corporate life, and, cu- and can get quite a bit of debt. And I'll talk about the exact amount in a moment. And I've revealed it previously on, it, on an episode on money shame. So if you're currying debt and you want to eliminate debt, then the next few weeks are going to be really powerful for you because I've got something great coming up. But I want to share some of the lessons and let's just kick it off. So when I first began my business, you know, it's a big jump when you go from corporate into 
starting a business by yourself. In corporate, I had a support team around me, pre-built. I had the mission of the company, pre-built. I had my objectives handed to me on a platter. I just simply had to you know, step into my skill set and deliver upon my objectives. You know, and I've pri- I took pride in, in always, always hitting my objectives and working with the teams and developing the people. And, you know, I had a lot of passion for leadership and, and growing uh, results through people. And I had a lot of passion through working with entre- entrepreneurial clients. But when I stepped out by myself, every single decision suddenly landed upon my shoulder. All those things that had previously been spoon fed to me were gone. So it didn't take very long before I was overthinking everything and facing indecision. You know, who should I target? What business model should I use? How much should I charge? What service or product should I create? And it just led to this massive levels of indecision. And to be honest, it was fear-based. It was fear. And to to overcome that fear, I thought, right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to learn more. So I went deep into learning mode. It's almost embarrassing to think about looking back. But I'm sure that there's some of you listening to this right now, knowing that you've been there or you're there right now. It's learning new skills, watching every single YouTube tutorial on video marketing or podcasting or Facebook advertising, going to all the webinars, going to all the seminars, reading all the books. I just developed this learning addiction, which is actually a good skill to have if it's it's well-focused and well-controlled. But spending all your time learning stuff to avoid is actually just avoiding taking the action. So I was avoiding the important stuff. You know, I knew to build a business, I had to get in the game, yet I was avoiding it. I was just stuck in my way, just learning, learning, learning. I didn't have a routine. I was doubting myself, procrastinating. You know, I'd get into fits and spurts of activity, but then I'd just pull back because of my own fears, my own self-doubt. Even when I started creating content, I was stuck in this world of perfectionism, it all, you know, deep-rooted in this am I good enough piece. And even when I did great work, it was inconsistent. I was trying to do everything myself. Some days I failed to get started and I failed to put myself out there. You know, I really, really had some deep challenges when I started. And, and I know I'm not alone and I have no fear in saying this out loud because I've been, through, I've been through deeply through the journey and come out the other side positively. And my mission now is to help people overcome those particular struggles. Uh, struggles and strains because it happens at every level you know you, for listeners of this show you you know I interview some you know some big hitters and some of those challenges come up time and time again over over, over the course of their business and it's always fear self-doubt and diminished self-worth that cause these major problems so I faced these massive massive pillars these massive challenges throughout the past three years uh, of, of growing the business and what it resulted in was really you know, three, three years plus of struggle, stress and sacrifice and living well below what I'm capable of. And it just resulted in me deepening my debt, becoming dissatisfied, frustrated with myself. You know, I wasn't a good person to be around during this time, even though I was, you know, brandishing this, you know, live without limits, unstoppable brand over the course of the three years as changed over the three years. But the whole message was the same. Go and live, live life by design, overcome your limits. But I was deeply battling my own limits at the time. And it's interesting because a lot of clients I work with in terms of their expertise, it's really about sharing how they've overcome those, those core challenges themselves. So whatever those challenges are in their life, whether it's you know, conquering obesity, for example, and becoming a, a, a physical trainer and helping other people to conquer their weight issues. Or if it's someone who has had deep financial struggles and they've mastered the art of money and now they teach other people how to master the art of money. Often this, the, the challenges that we overcome become the vehicle that we, we put into play in terms of our business. So what happened was at the end of this kind of three-year struggle, things I started to have some green shoots, started building my business. But it was tough. It's been tough. And even to this day, right now, because of the challenges I faced over the kind of three, three and a half years of, of building the business, and prior to that, you know, I made some irresponsible decisions when it came to borrowing money during my corporate days. You know, my salary would go up every single year, every single six months at pay review because I was delivering on my objectives. You know, back in the day, we had bonuses, so the bonus would come in, I'd clear out my credit cards, but then something funky happened during the recession, and all of a sudden, pay rises were frozen, and bonuses were unheard of, as you can imagine, being in a bank during the financial, uh, financial crisis, it would be highly frowned upon if we were, we were continuing to receive bonuses. And by the way, I wasn't in the type of banking that you've probably seen glamorized in the Wolf of Wall Street or you know, any of these stories about the recession. I wasn't in investment banking. I wasn't a trader. I worked in both uh, the branch banking sector in terms of the branch to, the, the, the branches you see in a town or your city, 
And I worked in commercial banking, which is working with a small SME up to corporate style um, clients. So I didn't work in that investment piece. I didn't press the red button that triggered the uh, the recession. I just watched The Big Short, actually, which is a fascinating film that's really sh- shed light on what happened during the financial crisis. I recommend you watch that. It is a very accurate uh, depiction of what happened, especially from the United States in terms of that point of view, because it was, it was set there. But I didn't create the recession, but I've since then, you know, since during that time, I, uh, I made some irresponsible decisions when it came to borrowing money. And as a result, you know, that when the, when the bonuses dried up and the pay rises froze, all of a sudden I was unable to pay off my debt. And, you know, banks being what they were, especially during that time, linking to that point I just made, they keep sending you letters saying, here, have some more credit. Here, have an extension to your credit card. And I'm thinking, OK, here, let's book another holiday. Let's go to Cuba for a few weeks. And behaving irresponsibly, having a lot of fun, but accumulating a lot of debt. So right now, despite all of that, and despite now starting to work with the kind of key clients I want to work with and building my business and starting to you know really uh, make a mark for myself through, through the podcast, through the clients I'm working with, I have a total debt that now stands at over £22,000 in unsecured debt. And uh, my, one of my priorities for the rest of this year is to finish this year with no debt. You know, Right now, I'm just paying the minimum payments. It goes in and out every month. But I want to clear it by the end of the year. So this this system reset, this starting over episode is is twofold really. One, it's I wanted to share some of the challenges I've been through and, and provide a frame, framework to help you guys avoid some of the mistakes I did. But if you're going through an area of transformation right now and you want to finish this year on a high, whether it's a business transformation, a financial transformation, a body transformation, whatever it is in terms of how you want to finish this year, this episode is for you. This is my system reset right now. In terms of that debt, I'm drawing the line. What area in your life right now could you say, I'm drawing the line? Where do you want a system reset? You know, none of us can change what happened in the past. I can't change what's happened in the past, but I can learn from it. And there's a lot that we can learn from our past. Now, the stories that we carry around with us about our past can either positively affect our future or they can negatively affect our future. I say, choose the positive. Choose to look for the things that you can learn and then eliminate, scratch out all those things that drag you down. Let's focus on what we can do from the stories and from the mistakes we've made. We all make mistakes. We're all human. So right now, for me, represents a new start. Effectively, you know, I'm not starting the business over. It's not, it's not that. But what I'm saying is I'm drawing a line under that debt and actually I'm changing the way I do business going forward because I'm going through this real period of reinvention. You know, I'm committed to this new future that I want to create. In fact, you know, if you've been following my story, I started growing a beard at the beginning of this, at the beginning of this month. I decided that I was going to eliminate shaving and eliminate alcohol. And so far, I haven't had any alcohol and I haven't shaved. And I've never grown a beard in my life. You know, I've had stubble. Uh, but I call it the beard of redemption. You know, this is part of the reinvention process. And I think I picked it up subconsciously from hearing an interview with Chris Stoikos, who's the founder of Dollar Beard Club. Uh, if you haven't checked out that that, that guy and his business, you really should. Um, it's a phenomenal story. And I, I hope to bring it to the show. I've just connected with him on Facebook. So let's see what happens. So I've got the beard of redemption. It's about committing to a cause and uh, and seeing something through to completion. So... This right now, I'm asking a lot of questions. Who am I? Who am I becoming? Where am I going? How am I going to get there? And I'm very fortunate because I've left a trail with the journey I've been on that's provided me with some extremely powerful answers. And I've created a foundational framework from which I'm now going to start operating from. And I encourage you to do the same if you are not where you want to be right now. That could be in any area of your life. So I'm going to share a five-step framework with you right now. So right now, like I said, this is a period of reinvention. I'm reinventing myself. I'm reinventing my business. Over the past couple of months, I've been talking about the things like the 80-20 principle in terms of thinking about the tasks and activities, that the 20% of tasks and activities that create 80% of your results and 80% of your happiness. So I've been going through this process myself, really evaluating how I, how I live my life. I've been looking a lot how I can simplify, simplification and, and, and create greater ease and greater flow in my life. Moving away from that stress, struggle, and sacrifice. You know, those, those stresses we can face on a day-to-day basis really cause tension. You know, even though I'm you know, paying this debt off and it's slowly ticking down, it comes up, you know, at least a daily basis thinking, thinking about it. And it, it's weight on my shoulder because it's still there. And, you know, although it does represent a lot of positive things that it was used for, I didn't always use it responsibly, responsibly certainly during my early 20s, uh, mid-20s, when I, was a, when I was a bit more of a party animal. 
But a lot of good things came from it. But right now, I don't want to associate anything positive to it as I want to move away from it. So, you know, when you want to create change in life, you have to create pain. You have to link pain to the things you want to remove. And that's certainly one area I want to function on uh, removing uh, is that debt. So here's my 5C framework for building an unstoppable business or creating a transformation in your life. So there's five C's. Number one is clarity. Number two is certainty. Number three is capability. Number four is creation. And number five is connection. These five C's are very specific to business, but you can take some of the principles in any area of your life. So when it comes to business, you know, if I was to start all over again right now, these five C's would give me a real clear framework from which to operate from. All that overthinking, that procrastination, that indecision, that doubt, that fear would be eliminated if I was able to follow this 5C formula. So I'm going to share it with you very briefly now. So clarity now in business. Let me make a distinction between something I call the wide lens and the narrow lens. I've, I've been, I picked up these terms from a guy called um, Alex Shafrin, who talks about these lens, this concept of lenses. And I, I've really applied it to my life. So the wide lens is your big picture. This is someday. It's the someday vision. It's the thing that you'd like to achieve in the future. You don't need to put a timeline on it because as soon as you put a timeline on the future, you start to constrain yourself by the number of years you allocate to it. So just operate from the period of timeline someday. This is I know in my life, this is how I want my life to look at some point in the future. Versus then the narrow lens, which is your 90-day goals, that real manageable chunk of time so clarity begins with knowing what your wide wide lens vision is and knowing also what your narrow lens is what your 90-day goals how do you translate that big picture into a set of manageable actionable tasks and activities that will help you achieve those 90-day goals and move you towards that long-term future you see when i first started you know i didn't really get to take the time out to focus on what my long term future was going to look like i had an idea but i didn't knock it down and specifically what's even worse i didn't set concrete 90 day goals you're in business setting clear targets is so important i was i was used to doing that in corporate you know day to day week to week month to month quarter to quarter year to year it was very it was very important to set annual targets and then break it down through the time periods. Yeah, I didn't do it in my own business. I was almost rebelling against that corporate way, that corporate way of micromanagement. But it's so important. All I needed to do was say, right, 90 days, let's replace my former salary. What do, how am I going to do it? So clarity starts with setting a clear target, a clear goal. And then in business, it comes down to what problem will I solve? And I did an exercise today with one of my clients. We're really getting into his story to figure out where the power is because each one of us in our story we've had problems that we've personally encountered and we've had problems that we've professionally encountered and solved and if we have a unique ability in solving a certain set of problems either personally or professionally then we can build a business on those problem solving abilities you see to me entrepreneurship is simply one of two things it's either solving problems or creating new capabilities that will enable someone to achieve a result so What I should have thought about when I first got started and how I think now is what problem will I solve right now? And you can have a baseline problem that you're known for in the market for solving or campaign by campaign, product by product, you can think what problem or capability, what problem will I solve or what capability will I create for my target market? That brings us to number two, who will I help solve the problem? Many people, me included, when I started, I didn't get clear on who I wanted to serve. You need to figure out who do you want to be a hero to? When someone says to me, I work with anyone, well, if you try and market to anyone, you end up serving no one. You end up reaching no one. You need to provide a door for people to walk through. You know, again, using the example of, say, a personal trainer, the needs of a, uh, of a professional, say, female-driven CEO is very different to someone whose primary career involves physical activity. It's very different. So if you position your market to, to uh, group A versus group B and you send the same message, it's not going to resonate. You're missing 50% of the market. So you need to know clearly who you're going to help solve the problem for and who do you want to be a hero to. That becomes your target customer. I didn't do that. I encourage you to start. If you're in this position right now and you don't know clearly who your target customer is, massively important. 
Next step is to decide how you're going to solve the problem. There are many ways you can solve a problem. In my world, I could do group coaching sessions. I could do one-to-ones. I could do boot camp style training. I could do keynote speeches. I could do digital courses. There's such a multitude, live experiences, workshops. There's such a, such a multitude of options. But it's just make it about making a decision. How do I want to solve the problem and where and which, which way would be most effective for me to do this? Most of us already know the answer, but we just don't ask the right questions. Next piece is, how much will I charge for solving the problem? The challenge for most people here is that they don't put enough zeros on the end of their, their price point. I was one of those. In fact, you know, I didn't even make a concrete choice about how my solution would look at the beginning. I was just overthinking everything. I didn't put a fork in the sand and say, this is what I do and how much I'm going to charge for doing it. So how much we charge for solving the problem? Next piece is how many sales do you need to make to achieve your target? So for example, in my case, if I wanted to replace my um, monthly salary, my monthly corporate salary, then I could very easily have that financial target. I've got my solution. What's the price point that I need to set it at in order to hit that uh, goal? You know, price times the number of sales I need to make and say, you know, say to say arbitrarily, arbitrarily it was, you know, 5K a month and I would create a package at two and a half K. I just need two clients at two and a half K to hit that target. But I didn't do any of that. I didn't do any of that planning. It's so basic. So, so basic. But so many people I meet, I can see the problem. You know, I can see the problem instantly. If you're not setting those clear targets, it's so, so important. And even as you get started, even as you get progress, it's important to measure everything. The metrics will drive your business. And then finally, once you know who you who are you going to help? How are you going to help them? What problem you're solving? And how much you're charging? And how many sales you need to make to hit your target? The next question is, how do I reach my target clients? That's your marketing strategy. And again, once you know all the above, finding the clients is pretty simple. There's many, there's many ways you can attract leads, whether online, offline, you can be the hunted or the hunter. But it doesn't help unless you can't get anywhere until you know the answer to the above questions. You, know, you need to know what problems you're solving, what capabilities you're bringing to the marketplace, who are you going to help? How much are you going to charge? How are you going to solve the problem? And how many sales you need to make to, to hit your targets? And only then can you create a marketing strategy that will help you hit your goals. So clarity is so, so powerful. Clarity is the ultimate ingredient for success. So if you're thinking about any area outside of business, whether it's weight loss, whether it's relationships, you know, if you think about relationships, who, what are the characteristics of the ideal partner that you want to partner with? You know, in, in an intimate relationship, what, do you, what characteristics must they have? What characteristics must they not have? When you have that clarity, it becomes very simple to see a solution. Next step is certainty. And for me, this comes down to who you are. And again, as an entrepreneur, this is an entrepreneurial-based episode. Who am I as an entrepreneur? What are my passions? What are my skills? What are my strengths? What's my identity as an entrepreneur? And if I was able to go back and redesign who I felt I was at the time, you know, I'd eliminate a lot of that fear, a lot of that doubt, a lot of that self-worth issues by just creating myself by conscious design and focusing on what my passions are, focusing on my skills, focusing on my strengths, focusing on my A game and thinking about all the things that I have done in my past that show that I am worthy and capable and that I can do what I say I'm going to do and start small and grow fast. It's very simple, but I didn't do that. So certainty comes from knowing truly who you are as an entrepreneur, knowing your skills, knowing your passions, knowing your strengths, knowing your values, knowing your identity. That gives you self-belief. And self-belief is what is the driver of every success, whether in business or life. But you get that from certainty. And think about the, the highest level of success people you meet. They just exude this level of certainty. Some call it confidence. I call it certainty because confidence manifests in very different ways. But they're certain in who they are and certain in where they're going. And that comes from the clarity that we spoke about just a moment ago. Not only in clarity in terms of what you do and where you're going, but also who you are. Number three is capability. This is about identifying your superpower, paying attention to your strengths, identifying your unique ability. What's the one activity that would continually fascinate and motivate you for the rest of your life if you were to do it and thanks to Dan Sullivan for that question it's such a powerful question what is the one activity that you would continue that would continually fascinate and motivate you for the rest of your life you know if you can identify that one activity and then you build your superpower around that one activity you build your strengths and skill set around that you're going to create amazing amazing results but developing and refining your capabilities is the route to success. So many of these silver bullet solutions you see online is all about, 
It's all about, you know, rapid money making and, you know, the shortcuts, the lose weight in five minutes a day. It's not about strengthening your capabilities, but it should be. Building capabilities are the secret to success. If you know where you're going and know who you are and you know your superpowers, then it's just about constantly developing and refining that superpower, getting better and better every single day, practicing on your craft rather than your graft. It's not about the grind. It's about maximizing your craft and becoming skilled. You know, think about the top people in any industry, whether it's music, whether it's film, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's the guy who creates the furniture. It's about craft. It's about maximizing your capabilities and becoming highly skilled. Skills create worth. So number four, creation. This is about what value can you create for your ideal customer to help them solve their most pressing problems? What can you give away? I, I learned the hard way. It's about giving first. What value can you give? How can you build no like, and trust through giving first? How can you give more value than anyone else? Eben Pagan calls this pushing the free line. You know, creating value is the key to success in business. The more value you create, the more worth, the, the more worth you have in the marketplace. The more problems you solve, the more worth you have. But it all comes from these steps that we've gone before us. Clarity, certainty, capability. Once you're able to do that, then you're able to create compelling value that adds real uh, tangible results to the bottom line for your end user. And then the final piece, the one I overlook the most, connection. Connection. Nothing great is ever achieved alone. It's about asking the question, who can help me achieve my goals and objectives? We all need a support team. Just recently, I was thinking about the highest level of success that I had in my, in my corporate career and, and what factors contributed to that success. I had some real highs during the early part of my career, and I was looking back thinking, what was it that created those highs? And I had a superb support team. I had coaches. I had mentors. I had a peer group. I had people that were pushing me because they saw my ability. I had people coaching me. I had, I had a peer group that were hungry for success, and I knew that if I pushed myself harder, I could, I could win the game. So who do you need around you to make this happen? Is it mentors, coaches, mastermind groups, peer groups, industry? What do you need around you to support you? And then next is team. What tasks can you eliminate from your schedule that don't reflect your unique zone of genius, your unique ability? What can you outsource and delegate? Perhaps you do need a team. And you know, there's so many different ways to create a team right now. There's ways to get volunteers. There's to exchange that you can do exchange of value. You can outsource very inexpensively. Who do you need to operate? Who do you need to bring in to help you operate on a day-to-day basis? Once you understand your capabilities, then you know what you need to outsource and delegate because there's no point trying to do it all. That was a mistake I made. So these five C's gave gave me a framework now, give me a framework and hopefully give you a framework too in terms of how you can system reset, how you can start over. And, you know, it's not about starting over. We're all making progress, but this is about drawing a line under where we've been and creating a compelling future where we want to go and making it simple. Clarity, certainty, capability, creation, and connection. These five C's will help you transform your business and any, any area of your life. You know, again, using the example of, uh, say, weight loss, the connection piece at the final part. Accountability. Accountability is 90% of the way to creating the result. If you've got people who are on your side helping you every step of the way, you've got coaches and mentors helping you overcome your challenges. You know, my partner, Lizzie, she's a personal trainer. You know, she's helped so many people lose weight and get their ideal body. It comes from having that person, that support team. All right, so system reset is on. I talked to you about my personal debt. I'm not, uh, you know, I used to hold a lot of shame to that. I can just stand here and say that's what I have now. I know there's people with far greater debt. I know there's people with less debt. It's It's all a result of things that have gone upstream that I cannot change. But what I can change right now is what I do about it right now. And I'm making the commitment. My system reset is to eliminate that debt before the end of the year. And to support myself and you guys, if you're, on a, if you're on a mission to grow your financial future, and in conjunction with the Money Mindset mini-series, which is in play for the whole month of November, it kick-started last week with Barry Tesla's interview, and it's going to continue all the way through November, every single Thursday, I'll be bringing a new expert to help you on money mindset and your relationship to money. In conjunction with that, I'm going to be creating a 30 Days of November financial transformation program. When I say program, that doesn't have a cost. This is a 30-day sprint, and I invite you to become part of this sprint with me. For 30 days, we work hand-in-hand as a group to smash out our financial targets. 
So this is about getting clear on what you want to achieve in November, creating your plan, executing daily with daily support and accountability. In order to facilitate this, I'm simply going to invite you to join me in my private Facebook group. And for 30 days in November, kicking off on the 1st of November, we're going to have a 30-day financial sprint. And we're just going to go for it hand in hand, together, to transform our financial future. My personal objective, I've already told you what that is. I'm going to work flat out to eliminate that debt. If you've got debt to eliminate or you know someone who wants to eliminate debt, please introduce them to what we're doing. If you're just simply looking to up-level your income, you want to raise your financial standard, this challenge is for you, a 30-day free financial thrive challenge. We're going to work every single day to make this happen, supporting each other, working on the mindset, working on the plan, working on the daily action plan. And I don't care what industry you're in, as long as you're not doing anything illegal or hurting anyone, I invite you to cut off from the past and join me in a system reset of your own. Let's work together on creating a prosperous future for not only ourselves and those we care about, but for generations to come so that we can make an impact that is far greater than ourselves. Are you game? If you are game and you want to play, you want to play in November 30 days of financial transformation, head on over to unstoppablepodcast.com forward slash tribe and sign up to join the free Facebook group on, uh, on the Unstoppable website. And get ready for my first rally call. It's coming. You know, over the next week, I'm putting stuff together to to kick off this 30-day challenge. And then following Monday's episode next week, we're going to dive right in from the following day. Tuesday, the 1st of November, 30 days to thrive. I'm all in. Are you? I hope you do join me. Please do share this with someone who you know needs to work on their financial future. Whether they're making good money now is irrelevant. If they're still carrying debt like I am, it's something you want to eliminate. If you want to up-level your income, you want to change your monthly salary, or you want to get more clients in your business and raise your prices, this challenge is going to be for you. So come on over to the unstoppablepodcast.com forward slash tribe, or simply search for Unstoppable Mastermind on Facebook. Come and hunt me down. Over the next few days, I'll be putting some information out there that will help you to achieve your financial goals in November 2016. Let's get ready to do this. I'm all in, and I challenge you to be too. Is it your time to system reset? Join me. All right, so I promised you at the beginning of the episode that I would tell you who is coming up next on the Unstoppable Podcast this Thursday. I'm delighted to bring Kate Northrup. Kate Northrup is a fantastic human being who has done some amazing things financially. She specializes, you know, outside of her entrepreneurial activities, she helps many, many people to work on their own inner game when it comes to the mind, financial mindset. We're going to be interview. I'm doing the interview this Wednesday, this Wednesday evening, and it'll be live the very next day. Part two will be live this week. So I can't tell you any more than that because we haven't done the show yet. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to want to subscribe to make sure you never miss a beat. We're going to be running this Money Mindset series all the way through in November, every single Thursday of the month. And indeed, probably the Monday episodes is going to be focused on that topic too, really focusing on the financial future, financial transformation, financial thrive. 30 days in November. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Come and join the Facebook group. That is it for today. That's all for now. Until next time, go out there, unleash your greatness, build your empire, make your impact, and live your ultimate life. You are unstoppable. Unstoppable.